A USB rechargeable LED light. This is one of these things that I was buying some other stuff from an eBay seller and I just saw this and thought, okay, let's add that on. So here is the idea. Initially, I have to say when this arrived, it's so light. This thing weighs 90 grams or about three ounces. And it was so cheap that I wondered if they'd made a mistake in the listing or just been creative in their listing because it says a uh, 14 LED desk lamps USB charging reading light. And the it, the price was in Canadian dollars, six dollars sixty five, which it translates to approximately five dollars US. And when it arrived, uh, the battery was flat because it turns out there is a battery. I plugged in the USB lead and it sort of worked. And it's got this sort of touch button. All you have to do is just touch your finger against it or bring it in the vicinity, and it goes through three brightnesses and then off again. And once it charged up, it did actually run. So I ran the thing completely flat, charged it up fully. The capacity of the cell inside is 250 milliamp hour. It's got that slightly annoying feature now. I noticed there's a wee dimple on top. I wonder if that's designed. Maybe they were going to have a touch sensor on top there. Maybe it's an option. But um, it's got that slight annoying feature that if you were to, say, put it on at low level and leave it for a moment, it won't turn back off. It has to go through all those intensity settings, low, medium and high, before it goes off again. But that's okay. I can see dimples in here that suggest that the rubber feet underneath are hiding screws. So let's uh, get those. Uh, let's get those rubber feet off. Where is the flat blade screwdriver? Will I just try smashing the screwdriver through the through the rubber feet? Yeah, that works. It's not a pretty way to do it. It is mincing the rubber feet off a bit. Not that I'm particularly bothered about that. Would they come off anyway? Yeah, they're kind of like, uh, where's the, I was looking for my other flat blade screwdriver, there's, there's a different one. Let's try and uh, be professional about this. Oh, they, they don't come off very well anyway. Right, okay, that'll do. I'll just hoik them out like this. They're just gripping on by this adhesive at the edge and it really is just, it's not uh, coming across, coming off in a pretty manner. That's okay. I could always put on better feet on it if I like it. So let's uh, get these screws out of here. And I can already tell from the shadow that there is looking like just a diagonal outline of a lithium cell possibly just stuck under there. So I'm guessing there's a couple of circuit boards in here. The touch sensor might be combined to the battery charging circuitry. Or there might be a separate circuit board for that. We'll find out in a moment when I've got this off. If this is the last screw... Let's see what's inside. Is it pinned together as well? Nope, here we go, here we go. Oh, interesting. A little bit of prizing going on here. What do we have? We have a dedicated little circuit board and the touch chip is actually just going up to a copper pad here. That's interesting. The chip is inevitably not going to have a number, but uh, I'll take a look at it with the magnifying glass. It inevitably doesn't have a number. As some of you have mentioned, it could well be printed underneath the chip. Um, can I pop this out? Is there anything on the other side of this? It's got this, a heat staked, uh, heat riveted in. Nothing on the other side. It's just that chip, which is presumably then a dedicated uh, chip just for that purpose. Does the lithium cell, which is just sat in at a random angle, does it have any protection on it? Let's uh, let's slip the cover off this. Let's just use a knife in it. Mm. Keep in mind, this is fully charged. Not that I'm really too uh, terrified about a tiny little cell like this. The 250 milliamp power. Is this a little phone cell in here? Is it a metal cased cell? It is a little metal cased cell. Let's uh, slit across here then. So it's a bare cell. There's no protection. It's got the negative onto the case this time and the positive onto the top tab. Interesting. So then that's going up the uh, inside of this. It's got a screw to lock this in. They basically just wedge the screw in to act as a sort of friction lock, I'm guessing. And it's got this sort of flexible core up the middle of it. 
so uh, let's pop the end of this off. I'm kind of wondering what that chip is now. I'm guessing it might be a super special purpose chip. I'll have a wee look on the internet and if I find anything I'll put it in the description below and likewise if you guys know what it is you can put a, a comment down below. Not a lot here is there? There's not even a resistor here. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There are 14 LEDs. 14 LEDs and if I touch this little thing it uh, lights them up. I'm guessing ultimately there must be a resistor. I don't see a resistor. Oh yes, there is a resistor going out to the LEDs. Quite a low value, I'd guess. One ohm is what it happens to be, and then it will be pulsing and modulating them. I didn't check for the pulse of the modulation speed. I shall try and grip this now, and I shall thrash this about wildly while trying to actually work out if there's much uh, flickering. Oh, that's very good. There is no visible flicker, so the pulse of the modulation is really fast. And that's more or less it. That is about all I can say about this. Uh, there is tons of room in here that if you so desired, you could fill this up with a big fat lithium cell. I'm trying to think what lithium cell comes to mind that would actually fit in there. I'm not sure if an 18650 would sit inside. I suppose I could go and get an 18650 and I could try it. Um, one moment, I'm just going to do that. Okay, right. Yes, you can fit an 18650 in like this. It, it's a bit of a tight fit. It squeezes the case a bit. But you could also fit a really big battery in here, like a phone battery. However, can I suggest that you uh, use a protected one? Because as far as I can see at the moment, the entire charge circuitry in here is a resistor and LED to show it's connected to the USB supply and a diode between the USB lead and the lithium cell. The negative is connected straight to the uh, the USB lead and the positive from the USB input is going through this diode to the lithium cell positive. This is not a protected cell. And it appears that the voltage goes well above 4.2 volts. Basically, uh, whatever supply you get that from the five, if from your USB supply, it could be five volts bang on. It could be slightly higher, slightly lower. It will be that minus about 0.6 of the diode that is going to the lithium cell. So I really would recommend to protect a protected cell for that. Other than that, it has you know it's it's. Okay, said Clive, having just announced that it doesn't have any lithium cell protection. There is circuitry placed. There, there's positions on here for that uh, circuitry, but it's just not been populated. It's got a position for the little five-pin universal charge and protect type chip. Uh, yeah, that's a bit of a letdown, really. But other than that, everything's there, and if you used a protected cell, I guess... It's going to be okay, but it does again rely on the resistance of the USB lead for the charging current limited. So quite a chunky protected cell then. That'll be why it was cheap. I thought I'd investigate this just a little bit more because I wanted to make sure I was seeing things correctly here. And it is exactly as I thought. The positive from the USB supply is coming to this big one amp diode just as well because it's going straight to the lithium cell with no current limiting so that it's only the lead that's doing the current limiting. It, the positive also goes to the LED and then through this 330 ohm resistor to negative. Um, and although there's this position for this charge control chip, this pad for the battery is connected straight up to the negative of the USB connector and it's also bridged across to the, the shell. And that means that, you know, even if you put one of those chips in, there's no way to actually make that active. It's just not in use. Very strange, very strange indeed. The chip is quite interesting. I've doodled down the circuitry for that. It derives a power supply from the battery's positive rail via this 100 ohm resistor to a capacitor so it provides a slightly decoupled supply to pin 1. Pin 8 is going to negative. The touch is going to pin 7. Uh, there's a capacitor connected between pin 6 and the, the negative supply of the battery. And then pin 5 is the drive pin that the LEDs go from the positive rail of the battery via that 1 ohm resistor to that pin. So that's the, the pin down here, pin 1 positive, 
uh, two, three and four not used and by not used I just couldn't even detect a diode between them and the negative and positive uh, and then it's got the output, the capacitor and the touch input which does have a diode between positive and negative for protection against static discharge and that's fundamentally it. The chip itself draws a very low current. Uh, the standby current is 9 microamps, the active current is 2, mil two milliamps and I'm guessing the active current is probably driving the transistor although having said that Possibly not, because I actually connected the meter to this and then I touched the contact here, the little touch sensor contact, and even touching it uh, three times and then for the fourth time for off, the current stayed at two milliamps. And you'd think if it was driving the transistor with that, with the different uh, mark space ratio for the, the intensity control, that that would have varied, but it didn't. So that must just be the circuitry's active state. I wonder if this is a microcontroller of some type. I think it is a dedicated touch switch. So uh, if you do get one of these, the first thing I'd recommend as an improvement is putting in a lithium cell with the protection usually in the negative built into it. The lithium cell that came with it, uh, which is not protected, is an 053040. That means it's 5 millimeters thick, 30 millimeters wide and 40 millimeters long. And that's fundamentally it. It works, but it is overcharging that lithium cell. That's very odd. Oh, incidentally, the 053040s were all 500 milliamps on the internet, that I've, the ones that I found. This one only seems to go up to 250 milliamps, but maybe that's because it's been a bit abused. Uh, but there you go, very, very simple. Uh, I don't know what this chip is. Some of you might actually know what that is. But um, yeah, if you do get one of these, just uh, be aware that the Lithium cell in it is not protected at all, and it could really do with a replacement. And while you're at it, you might as well get a bigger one and stick it in, because then you'll have a much higher capacity unit. Because other than that, it seems absolutely fine.